first. Hello, everybody. This is the ADP show. At the pup. It is ADP. And you like our new set, guys? <laughs> uh, it's still in the works, but... Uh, yeah, two weeks wasn't are, enough. Yeah, it wasn't enough. It's never enough. But we, we, we're still working on it. We are probably not going to be able to announce when it's done until it's literally done. So, if you see us sitting here, it's not done. It's not done. But don't worry, it is being worked on. So, hold your bitches! But, Bro, uh, as you all know, I'm Batman Dragon, and, and I'm here. And I am Z3KO Trinity, your special host. And um, today's episode has been brought to you guys by Popcorn. That's right. Mmm. Good old delicious popping corn. That's right. Mm. Mm. No popcorn. So, big also, announcement. Water. H2O. This goes perfect with butter and popcorn. Mm -hmm. uh, quick announcement, real quick. So, you all are used to us doing the ADP show right here on the Batman Dragon and Z3KO Chanity channel. And we've been bouncing back and forth. Confusing everybody, and everybody doesn't know, you know, who, what channel to watch for ADP or what. Yeah. And it's also really confusing to be like, okay, well, it's on this channel this week. I mean, if you know it was on this channel last week, then you know it's on my channel Mr. this week. Mr. Manuel, thank you for joining us. Hope you're having a good day at work, my buddy, my pal. Yeah, he's on break, so you don't have to be able to finish watching. But you can go home and finish the video once you, it's over with. Hopefully, you have time to. But, so we decided as a... Unit. Unit. That we were going to put the ADP show on a whole other channel and yep. make it the ADP show channel. We're going to have it up and running very soon. And I will put a link in the description. I will announce when it is up and fully running. So that way you guys can subscribe to that channel. Whenever you want to watch ADP, we're always going to go live on that channel. It's not going to be on my Z3KO Trinity channel. It's not going to be on the Batman Trinity. Batman Trinity? Hey, you need to change your name. Batman Trinity. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're watching be... this episode and you've watched in the past, please remember that as soon as the ADP Show channel becomes available, to add it on your subscriptions because that is where we will be posting the new episodes from now on. Yep, that's where we're going to do ADP from now on. Yes, and... So this is ep called episode 6, end of September. And so this is going to be the final Long day episode. Day. Sure. This is going to be the final episode of ADP on our separate channels. When it goes live on the ADP Which um, is show, this coming Saturday. it's going to be called the ADP show. Instead of Hopefully the ADP. that's what it will be called yeah. if uh, that hasn't been already taken. Yeah, well I'm talking about the actual episode. It's going to be called the ADP show episode and um i'd say we'll probably go to episode seven but we're going to name it 2.0 or whatever mm -hmm. but thank you all for coming and joining us this is going to be a very fun episode we've got a lot of stuff planned out for you all today yep. and yep. hopefully next week will be really special for y'all when you go and check out the new actual adp channel mm -hmm. we might do other videos on that channel maybe we haven't really decided yet we're just kind of That's playing true. around with stuff but we'll both have access to the channel, so if we believe it is ADP worthy. style worthy stuff, it'll be posted throughout the week. But mostly, it's gonna be posted on Saturdays when we do the show. Yeah. And right off the bat, you guys notice two props that we have set up here. My beautiful we clay have face a figure. Clay face figure, really nice, really expensive clay face figure. That the head pops off, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's a Joker head. This is the. Um, one from the Batman Arkham City game. Very detailed, very expensive figure. Yes. And we also have Stephen King's Gerald's game laid out in front of you right here. We are going to start with why Clayface is right there. Yes. I am doing on the chart with some DC Comics news. And that is DC Comics worthy. Will there be horror? Um, we are going to be talking about Stephen King. But ADP, what it is, is a complete random kind of news information channel with a lots of, you know, random shit. Like, uh, if you like some popcorn. Yeah, we do have a few horror-related stuff. We have the Gerald's Game review. 
Um, we and, also have the top five. October is coming up, so ADP will be filled with some horror kind of theme because, you know, tis the season. Yeah, next week's but, uh, episode on Saturday, the very first episode on the ADP show channel that we are releasing starting next week. But if you want horror, it's make be, sure you check out my horror vlogs I do every Wednesday. Yeah, which so. are really good vlogs and I really do like them. Mm -hmm. And if you really do like horror, next week will be the very first episode of a long list of episodes that's going to be based on horror yeah. since it's October. But anyway, we're on eighty or on the chart with the DC Universe animated 10th anniversary Blu-ray box set. It is a box set that consists of 30 DC Comics animated films. Like, you know the recent ones that's been coming out. Justice League War, uh, The Killing Joke, um, the newest one, Batman and Harley Quinn. Just every one of the DC animated films have been put together in a limited edition box set. It is numbered. It'll say like one out of you know, 10,000 or, you know, 7,326 out of 10,000. So it is a limited amount. And unfortunately, the price is a little steep on that. Right now, it is at pre-order for 211 bucks. Regular retail price is 240 some bucks. It is really steep. But you gotta think, 30 movies on Blu-ray, if it was 10 bucks a pop, that total would be 300 bucks. So really, you're saving money by getting this, but it's a question of, should I spend 211 bucks right now on this box set? And also, not only does it come with the movies, but it comes with an adult coloring book of DC Comics, and each one, I don't know if you've ever seen the Harry Potter um, big box set that I have, but each you turn the page and it has the disc of the animated movie, and a background is like an artistic style of the cartoon itself. So each one's like a book. You just turn the page, there's a movie. Turn the page, there's a movie. So it's a big set. It's not like, you know, you're just paying 211 bucks and you're just getting a little box full of discs. So you're actually getting some stuff. And this will be released November 7th. So if you're looking for it, if you're a DC Comics fan and you really did love the animated movies, you don't have them on Blu-ray, and you feel like forking over 211 bucks then by all means, this is your chance. It's up for pre-order now on Amazon. Um, to answer a few questions as we're going, uh, Games Movie Entertainment, I do have a Twitter. I'm going to be making an official Facebook Twitter page for ADP as well, so you all can keep up to date with that. Um, um, thanks for popping in, the mayor. We're glad to see you. If you don't know who the mayor is, it's originally R.L. Spooks. Um, yeah, he changed his username to uh, the, the mayor, mayor now. Uh, he's still he's been making some really really beautiful videos. Um, I like the style. He's more outdoorsy, outdoorsy, Outdoor just kind of you know it's really unique actually. So check it out. Look up the mayor. And they made me take down my uh, my penguin tribute video for a copyright. Oh, huh. oh man, that sucks. Yeah, that does. Suck. YouTube is cracking down on a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I haven't got to post a lot of videos lately. I mean, I'm sure you all have noticed it's been a while since I've posted a video on my channel. That will be changing. I'll have a lot more videos up later. And uh, thank you for joining the mayor. We are going to be discussing Gerald's game, but not at this moment. It will be a little bit later. Yeah. Um, Jacob, what's your plans for Halloween? My plans for Halloween are still a secret. But don't worry. I have something special for you guys. I have something very Is it very 31st special. on a weekend? I do not know right off the bat. Because if not, I won't be able to join you because obviously I'll be working. Yeah, but uh, I'm I put in some days off for that day and a few days before it. So if I do yep. get those days off, then I sh everything should go according to. I work Halloween, so. But I'll be uh, yeah, 
Anyway, I'm going to leave it to my brother. That was on the chart with some DC news. If you guys are a DC Comics fan, you know, you might want to hit that up. Me, I own just a very few of those movies. Like, I own the uh, Aquaman Atlantis cartoon. I can't remember what it was called, which Throne is included. Atlantis. Throne of Atlantis. And then I own just very little Superman uh, cart animated movies. So, I would honestly love to get this box set, but 211 bucks. <laughs> um, you don't have Twitter, do you, Jacob? No, I do not. The only thing I have is pretty much Facebook, and I barely even use Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I'll be posting up YouTube the... YouTube uh... is basically my biggest uh, social interaction at this point. Yeah, I will be doing a lot of. Um, but thanks to Facebook, Facebook and Twitter. Thanks so. to Facebook, that's how I get some of this information. That's how I learned of the DC Comics thing. So. Yeah, and I'll be creating pages for. Um, Hello, Sir Hunter. I'll be creating some pages for um, Facebook and Twitter for ADP, so we can keep updating on there. You can also send your questions on Twitter and stuff like that as well for ADP. So. But. What I'm gonna go ahead and. Batman. Since Jacob did his big topic of on the chart, I guess I'll be bringing you all my big topic, uh, which is, you know, my normal topic I do every week. And that is Video Game Center. So I have three topics that I'm going to be talking about in Video Game Center today. The first one is Red Dead Redemption 2, mm. which was uh, announced a while back when we just got our first little trailer. Um, not really any gameplay, but another trailer that gave us a little bit more details about the game. So we oh, found yes. out that Red Dead Redemption 2 is not a sequel, but actually a prequel to the series. How interesting. Um, it is not based on the original character. Is it full prequel, or is it one of those prequel and sequels? No, I mean, a, it is called Red Dead Redemption 2. It is a full prequel. It's, way, it's before the first game. And the protagonist of this game is different as well. And the new protagonist is Arthur Morgan. Um, the story goes that there is an outlaw named Arthur Morgan who is a part of a gang called Van Der Linde, and they rob and steal their way across the vast and rugged parts of America in order to survive. Now, the Van Der Linde is a gang That's that is awful. also... Oh no, it's the Van Der Linde, my dear. But, well, here's the thing. The gang is also known as the Dutch's Gang, which is the gang in Red Dead Redemption 1, and the main character, John Marston was a part of that gang and left during the first game. So this is the this is the same gang just before. But it's a little bit of backstory to it, right? Yeah. So the trailer showed us a lot of th stuff that we can do in the game, like hunting, uh, breaking horses, so you, like, you can break them in so you can ride them and get them used to a person. You can do bank and train robberies. And the environments that you get to go through are the Old West, prairies, pine forests, snowy mountains, and even crocodile swamps. So... I'm going to eat this popcorn very seductively. Huh. So it doesn't just have a main story. It also announced a while back that there's going to be an online mode, which is going to be similar to GTA, GTA Online's online uh, play. And the game will be out in the, uh, this coming spring of 2018. Put in the comments section, Fat Guy Likes Popcorn. Fat guy likes popcorn. Yep, that's a new trend. Fat guy likes popcorn. Well, you uh, mean both. All right, well, continue. Okay, so second topic at Video Game Center is the Last of Us Part Two poster that just came out. I already just posted on, on also, Outbreak Day of 2017. They also, for PS4, I'm sure it's on Xbox uh, One as well, but they released a Last of Us Part Two theme for free that you can put on there. Um, what did you just say, Jacob? I'm sure that they put it on Xbox as well. The Last of Us is a PS4 exclusive. Oh, is it? My bad. It's the popcorn. It's got yeah. alcohol in it. Makes me hazy. <laughs> but, so the poster they released was on Outbreak Day, Outbreak Day of 2017, which is a celebration of the Last of Us game series by Naughty Dog. And his name is actually based off the event from the game that caused the apocalypse, because that's what they call Outbreak Day in the game. And the poster shows Ellie's hand, which is like has a scar on it, and it's really dark, and it's um, she has a hammer in it. 
which was similar to a poster they had last year at Outbreak Day, which had a picture of Ellie's hand with flower tattoos and stuff up it. And what that shows is that there's a difference in the character across time. So, you know, in the first game, she was this very innocent girl who had just, you know, was getting used to this world, and she still had these positive beliefs. And so that was like that flowery, you know, positive Ellie. And now and this now poster represents this, this, you know, <laughs> this scarred damaged uh, Ellie who's ready to, to... Real world. exactly and so this poster you know tells a lot about Ellie's change of character throughout mm -hmm. the first and second game um also there's a at the very bottom of the um hammer in her hand there's a wolf silhouette in the flames and so very interesting there was no wolf gang in the original um, series, so maybe that symbolizes that there's this wolf-related symbolum gang, or it means that the wildlife plays a huger role in this game than the original. Because in the original, you saw a giraffe, and you'd see monkeys, but what if the wildlife is not as simple? Like, what if it's wolves that it's are attacking you? you think. And stuff like that. What if it's zombie wolves? What exactly. if it's mutant zombie wolves? What if it's teenage mutant ninja zombie wolves? Think about it. I'm not gonna think too hard. So, you like the Batman hat? I love it. I love my Batman hat. I wear it every episode of ADP. So I far. am gonna kill it on Halloween. So yeah, that was the uh, basically the gist of the Last of Us Part Two poster. We know that it's coming out next year sometime. I'm really excited to see what we get with Last of Us Part Two story since the very first one was such a great game. Um. All right, finally, the last topic of the Video Game Center is all the video games that's coming out in October, since tomorrow is October 1st. Um, within the first week of October, you can pick up Forza Motorsport 7 for the Xbox One exclusively on the 3rd of October. And on October 5th, you can get Dragon's Dogma The Dark Arisen HD, which was a 360 game that is my best friend's, one of my best friend's favorite games. Um, week after that, on... Um, that Tuesday, you could pick up Middle Earth Shadows of War on the 10th for PS4 and Xbox Which One. Which I am looking forward to playing that game. And on Friday the 13th for the Xbox One PS4, you Boom. can also pick up Evil Within 2. And also Friday the 13th disc release. Yes, and the Friday the 13th disc release. Boom. On Friday the, the 13th has gotten through so many updates already. The game has gotten better. And if you guys have not seen... The new Virtual Cabin 2 uh, trailer for Friday the 13th for PS4, Xbox One, the whole shebang. Go look it up right now. I have very hard nipples because watching that video. Well then. Just, I, I don't want to spoil it. Go watch it now. Virtual Cabin 2 for the PS4, Xbox One, the whole shebang. Um, so for uh, Friday the 13th, there's supposed to be a storyline added. With the disc mm -hmm. release, there's not a 100% guarantee that that is going to be true since I've not heard anything since, and there's no trailers or nothing, and it's really soon. So that is not sure of right now. Um, for Hard enough to cut glass. Slice. And on October 17th, Play we get three video games. With those. Seuss. Watermelon. Slice. Um, on October 17th, you get Gran Turismo Sport, South Park Fractured Butthole, and Dota B 2K18. All on the same day they all release. And the, probably the best day of October ever October is October is 27th. Best. October is the best period. Yes, it is the best month for gaming altogether. But on October 27th, we get three of the best games coming out. Oh, yeah. Assassin's Creed Origins. One nipple. Super Mario Odyssey. Two nipple. And Wolfenstein 2 New Colossus. My nose. That's right. Okay, that's weird. October 27th is going to be the Cucaracha of the whole month. But that is all the Video Game Center announcements for today. October's going to be a great uh, month for video games. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, out of all those games, I'm probably only picking up two in October itself because I don't have that much money. Um, but I feel by the time the end of the year comes, I'll probably have a lot of the games that's on that list. Mm -hmm. But, uh, what's next, old Capitan? Cappuccino. See, when Jacob slices his things with his nipples. What, with my nipples? Wolverine slices things with his claws and Jacob's. 
I, I am Wolverine. It's just, you know, the nipples extend. Nipple rain. They go, and I have animantium in me, too. So animantium in your ball, in your balls. In my balls? <laughs> in your boobs. <laughs> All right, Jacob, so do you want to do another topic, or do you want me to do another topic? I guess we can go back to me if you want. All right, so All right. back to the movie reviews, since that's Today what I was waiting for. Today is Movie Monday, guys. Say it with me. Movie Monday. Even though it's not Monday, but... It's uh, never on Monday. But who cares? Movie you Monday. Call it Saturday uh, Monday. Or movie Sunday, Movie Monday, Monday is on this beautiful book. Beautiful movie. Obviously, I don't have a physical copy of the movie since it just stream. came out. Yeah. But uh, this movie, oh my God, words cannot express how much I loved this damn movie right here. This is by far one of the best Stephen King movies I have ever seen in my entire life. Stephen King's It is still number one in my eyes, but that movie is just so freaking good. Let me tell you a little bit of history with me in this book. I have picked this book up and read at least four chapters into the book pages. and stopped. I've never finished reading this book. I don't know why. I just started, then I'd stop it, and then I would pick up another book. It's not because the book was bad. It was just, I have no idea. But we're not talking about the book. We're talking about the movie. I literally just got done watching the movie today, and it was excellent. It was, the mayor uh, said that he watched it last night, and he'll never watch it again. What? Never watch it again? Movies never scare me, and Gerald's game scared me. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about, bro. That the was very violent, detailed. <laughs> the most violent scene I've ever seen in a horror movie was yeah, I her cringe. cutting her wrist in that... Hmm. That was cringe-worthy. Hmm. Try watching that scene without going, Damn! I think me, That's, you, and Bobby... Intense. Me, you, and Bobby said here... And that was the second time I watched it. I watched it with my friend, T-Man24TJ, and his sister. And I still sat there and just cringe the whole freaking time and um, but they captured the actors captured the characters excellently and the uh, movie was directed by the same people I think it was Mike Flanagan he uh, directed Oculus and uh, directed Hush which is by far Hush is also on Netflix by far one of the best movies I've ever seen as well so I had great expectations of his version of Gerald's Game, and he did not disappoint. From the very beginning, it kind of grips you. The whole uh, con uh, character dialogue with the wife and their husband as they're, you know, getting frisky. He handcuffs her to the bed, pretends like he's some other person just happened to find her tied to a bed. He gets all kinds of weird, and she's like, no, stop. And uh, he's like, no, I'm going to rape you. And and he's like, daddy gets what daddy wants. And she's like, no, stop it, because, you know, of the whole flashback stuff. Um, but I don't want to give away too much of the movie. See, that's the hardest part without spoiling it for you guys. I get so emotional, so passionate towards movies. I just want to blurt it all out. And if you have not seen the movie, then you will hate me for it. Yeah, seriously so, watch it. You know how I usually do Movie Mondays. So this is the this is the stripped version. This is the unspoiler version. Well, but since this is live, you don't need to spoil like cuz people can't just drop off of the of the show. And then, yeah, that is true. We are doing it live, and uh, I don't want to ruin it for people who have not seen this movie and are watching this live. So if you, you haven't watched have the, a good point. if you haven't watched the, if you haven't read the book, it is so close to the book. It's not even funny. Like uh, I read a description of the, I read a full plot summary of the book because I don't have time to read a lot of books. And when I do read books, it's not really Stephen King or horror. I'm usually reading like anime, not anime, but. Book series like Hunger Games, smaller stuff books. like that. Well, no, not really smaller, just like Hunger Games, all book Harry series, Potter, stuff, stuff like gotcha. that. So, to me, after reading the description of this entire movie, it went perfectly okay for each scene, all the way down to a T. Or to me, I think that was perfect. And sometimes books, 
that change things don't change the right things to make it better. They change mm -hmm. to make it worse. But don't worry, guys. I am going to read this book, and I will do a book versus movie. Which will be Gerald's full of spoilers. Game. Yeah, it's going to be full of spoilers, and I will tell you if there's any difference whatsoever. But for warning, when you get to the scene where she breaks glass and is about to cut her wrist, because that's in the books, for the love of God, be ready. Yeah, because that is cringe worthy. It literally and makes also you cringe. the Moonlight Man, terrifying. Well, yeah, he's called terrifying. Moonlight Man in the movie, but he's called the Space Cowboy in the book. So that's a big. That's a difference. But yeah, Drew's game one right now. Going to finish the video later on. Have good night, Mister J. Thank you for joining in. And yes, this movie will not disappoint you. Yeah, go if you're go watching watch it. That's it. perfect. Come back and we'll. Yeah, um, come back, watch our video, you know, comment in the below and let us know what you thought. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, words cannot express how much I love this. Usually with Mo Movie Mondays, I do a favorite scene and a most hated scene. My favorite scene of the entire movie is probably near the end where she's finally confronting this man, this moonlight man, and I really don't want to give it away, but anyway, please, just, if you get to a point where she is face to face with this moonlight man near the end, you will know that that's my favorite scene. My least favorite scene was probably the slicing the wrist because it's just so cringe-worthy. Movies, horror movies usually never bother me. My but favorite? But watching that scene, I was like, Okay, so I'm gonna. This is it's gonna sound weird, but my favorite scene and my least favorite scene are the same. Is scene. the same scene. My That's favorite scene. That's kind of how I feel about that scene. It's so twitch worthy, but that it's so good. Scene when it's ripped, like when that happens to her hand, you're just like this bitch really Went wants to out. get out of this. Like you know that she's gonna do whatever it takes to get out, and like oh. it would have been easier if she would have found something to break her wrists with than to do what she just did in that movie. And also, if you did not know this, Gerald's game takes place the exact same moment as Dolores Claiborne's, which is also a Stephen King book and a movie. And in the Gerald's game movie, it does play a big reference whenever they show the... Um, what the fuck? You turn on the Oh, PS I clicked button. his Xbox. His disc came out, I was touching my leg. I was like, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when you get to the clip scene, and she starts talking about seeing a woman standing over a well of darkness, like, I was like, <laughs> I just I just love that so much. And also, I love the whole movie. Also, it mentions whole the movie. Bag of Bones. Yes, it does, even though it was written before Bag of Bones. Yes. But I just like how they actually said the Bag of Bones in it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but, this 30 out of 5 stars, this movie is excellent. Don't take my word for it. Just go straight and watch it. This movie serves a high five. Yeah. And the solar clip scene was really cool. I really like the whole movie. Me, it's going to be it's, and it's such a good movie. Stephen King writes so beautifully in this story. Like Favorite you know, quote. you got you got writers he shackled you. Oh, way uh, he before. cut. He had you in handcuffs way before Gerald did. Love that so much. Love that quote so damn much. Stephen King, that's just you are the freaking man. Like, look at him, guys. Just look at him. There goes my hero. I'm just kidding. But seriously. Oh, right. that reminds I'm gonna me. Send it back your way, sir. At the end of this month, isn't it on a Saturday that we're going to go see R.L. Stein? You mean at the end of uh, October? Yeah, at the end of October, sorry. Mm -hmm. Isn't it on a Saturday or a Friday? Actually, it's a Friday. So, you know what that means? What? We're going to have to sneak a video in of R.L. Stein so we can post it on our Facebook page. We just got to sneak it. I don't know how, but we got to sneak it, because we're going to Actually, go. I've seen videos of people meeting him online, and they were filming. I don't know if he's down with it, like 100%, but... Get over it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to film you, RL! But, 
while the guards are taking me out. Um, <laughs> we may do uh, a. I'm hoping. I would, I would love it to get a picture yeah. with him, but I highly doubt it. I I'm think sure we're gonna do a, a goosebumps. I'm sure it's just a signing. The whole typical. Our I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice presentation of Earl's boobs. Wasn't impersonating him. <laughs> no, I know, but it's like he. he <laughs> well, not really, but I'm just saying. He said, "I don't know if it'd be the stereotypical person that does that." And I was like, "Super Earl's boobs would do that." Mm-hmm. But um, so probably at the end of the month when we go do that, I think we should probably do a Goosebumps episode for the show, just because. Okay. I'm going to put this them. popcorn here, because I'm going to eat every one of those damn popcorn. Alright, so we're going to move on to our next topic, which is going to be what I like to call TV Guide. Now, TV Guide is basically going to be me talking about TV shows um, that are coming on during the week and stuff. I'd like to do more of, like, talk about what was the best episode of the... our best TV show I watched this week of the episode wise what was my least favorite episode but this one is going to be more centered on other things for example the first topic of tv guide is the inhumans tv show that just came out this past week on the 29th uh well yesterday it was originally two episodes into one to make a movie that they aired uh, in imax theaters and then the rest of the series was on abc and they aired the first two episodes last night i mean it's it's okay like it's not Flash and Arrow and all those shows, it's just okay. It's um, but it's nothing like to really be excited about. I mean, it's it's exciting, and I love that I love the Inhumans, but it it feels like it's it should be X Men. Like you they have like a show called the something. they have the show called The Gifted that's coming on, that's also a Marvel TV show, but it's the X Men, and so I feel like The Gifted is probably going to be more interesting to watch than Inhumans because it's like they're trying to be cinematic on TV, but it just looks kind of bad. So I can kind of see where this is going to go. Do you think the gifted is going to cross over with? No, the because Inhumans? it's Fox. Fox is the gifted is completely separate from the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe, whereas oh, Inhumans okay. is connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, okay. And gotcha. so this show is connected to Agents of Shield, but I think that they just they're they're hoping to be the next X Men and they're trying to outdo the X Men, but it's not working. It's just. I don't know. I don't feel like if you know what the Inhumans are that you really could enjoy the show because it doesn't really give you this origins of the Inhumans. It's just kind of like, bam, here's Black Bolt, here's Medusa, here's Karnak, here's Gorgon, and they kind of just doing stuff. I mean, it's good. I enjoyed it. I'm going to continue watching it. But I feel like it's going to give me the same effect that, get that you know, the, right the Legends of Tomorrow. Like, I watched the whole first season and dropped it after that because it just it was not enough for me to keep watching. So I think Inhumans probably will be a disappointment in the end. It's decent. So it's not good or bad, it's just decent. And I think the more I watch it, I'll learn if I, how I feel about it. What about you guys? Do you, Have you guys watched Inhumans? What are your thoughts on the Inhumans? Um, you know, we'll catch it if you guys answer. Yeah, later. if you answer it, we'll catch it, capture it. If uh, the show is over and you're just now watching and you get this point, please comment below. Let us know. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is the Will and Grace reboot. They just now rebooted the Will and Grace series. Which I don't think would be any good, honestly. Surprisingly, it's um, it's pretty freaking good. Like, I thought it was going to be like season 9 of Will and Grace, but it's actually Will and Grace season 1. And the very first episode literally starts out like the very first episode of the original show. And it's not just redoing the show. It's actually a sequel. That so that's episode, what I was afraid that they were going to do is try to re... Not like full remake, but try to redo the show and well, it's not make really it redo. to where it's the, all the same corny jokes, the same kind no. of story. That's what I was thinking. The first episode was a throwback to the very first episode. And it's called 11 Years Later, the episode is. And it shows the whole cast... 11 years later, and... ghost in here. Yeah, no. And so basically the first episode starts off similar. It gives you that same feel that Will and Grace did when you originally watched it, except for things have changed. Like, Grace is now divorced from her husband that she married in the very last season of Will and Grace, and Will is separated from his boyfriend, and now they're living together again. It's still funny. The first episode had a lot of punches at Donald Trump, and, you know, it was kind of funny, and I enjoyed it. I just kind of hope that it's not one of those things like the re, you know, 
previous shows have been doing where they have this whole new show and you're like, oh my God, let's watch it. And then it gets canceled after one season because the fans aren't watching it. Mm. But I think Will and Grace is going to do good because Fuller House did good. Well, originally Will and Grace, the original show, was did yeah. excellent. And right now... I've only watched a few episodes of that myself. Yeah, and right now there's this huge kick of let's retell the stories of previous shows. Like, you know, we got Fuller House coming out or came out and, you know, yeah. we now got Will and Grace and Gilmore Girls and all, so on and so forth. Um, South Park season twenty one, I believe it's season twenty one. Yeah, I hope I'm right on that one. Um, finally, we're back to the basics. They stepped back from the two seasons they've done, and they're not doing these this whole one continuously. Story. Every episode is connected to the last, and we're getting this huge story after ten episodes. I'm so glad they dropped that after two seasons because yes, it, they were good episodes. But if you ask me, hey, you remember that one episode of season twenty where this happened? You mean the whole season? Because that's all that happened. Oh, that was episode tw- uh, episode three. I thought, I thought it was episode it was like five, six, or seven, three and eight. Or four. <laughs> because it's all the same episode, basically. You mm-hmm. never got a distinct. So but I did in all in their defense. I did like the story. It's just I mean, the, I did too. My biggest problem with it did not end was it. the end of the season. It wasn't really well thought of, and they did not end it. Yeah. Very well. So it was kind of disappointing there. Yeah, so I'm really glad that with season 21 they went back to the original ideas and now each episode is its own episode. But they still have parts of the episode from before that you can see. But it, it, So it's more like season 18. Because season 18 had different episodes with different stuff, but there was something going on in each one that was connected from the previous episode. Yeah, that existed in that time. Also, the Rick and Morty season finale is this Sunday. They have 10 episodes, or 9 episodes out already, and the 10th episode will air this Sunday. Which I'm currently, I just now finished season one, and I'm like two episodes in of season two myself. Oh, it's such a good but show. I, I love that show. Yeah, I've watched every episode of season three, every time it's aired, and I'm so sad that it's only ten episodes long because I love this show so much. My best friend loves it to the point where he's got every collectible that he could possibly get his hands on. And me and him, we're, we love that show. I think I've watched every episode of season one and two about six or seven times each. So, the finale is a Sunday. Please go watch it. If you haven't watched it before, please catch up because it is so good and it's worth watching. You could probably catch and watch the whole series before tomorrow night, mm-hmm. starting now. And then finally, just a quick run through. Some of our my favorite shows are back on TV. Gotham's two episodes in now. Gotham's How to Get really Away with good. Murder. Like just started its first or fourth season this year. Empire is on its fourth season as well. And my favorite, new favorite show that they had last year is back for a season two, and that's Lethal Weapon, the reboot of the original mm-hmm. movies. Funny, if you like the Waynes Brothers, it is they are so hilarious. And season two starts off on one of the greatest things they could have done, and my favorite shows are back. I have this huge list of shows this long, and like Comment. I'm continuously watching them all. Yes, and Penguin is amazing, and so is Scarecrow. Yes. Scarecrow is amazing. He did a great job with Scarecrow. Um, and yeah, Penguin, the actor Penguin, he is a really good actor. I remember him in a lot of uh, actual movies and stuff. Yeah. He was in Walking Dead for a little bit of time. And, oh, um, and Walking Dead comes back on next month, too. And I just caught up to five episodes before the season finale. And he's also Dead. in a movie called Would You Rather. He plays oh, a God. spoiled uh, yeah. kind of boy of the dad who's the host of the game. Uh but yeah, I would not recommend to watch that movie though, but he did play an excellent character in that movie. He's a great yeah. actor. He really is. So that's it for TV Guide. Um, probably next week what I'll be doing is I'll probably, you know, highlight some things that's happening in the shows. I'll probably talk about, you know, the newest episode, the episodes of this week and what was the best one, what was the least favorite one, and then of course what's coming up next. So, you know, like Walking Dead's coming on next month. We're, or this coming month, we're also getting Flash season, uh, the new season of Flash, the new season of mm-hmm. Arrow. So, so many more shows that's getting ready to start back up, and I'm going to be too busy watching okay. TV shows. But now, it's back to me, right? Mm-hmm. Are you done talking? <laughs> I'm just oh, kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. I bet you guys were thinking, we just had this popcorn because we're fat fucks. Who like popcorn? Actually, that's not why. Actually, that's why. why. Never mind. You said, "Hey, Jeremy, you should go make some popcorn." I was like, "Fuck yeah!" 
<laughs> Fuck yeah, I'll do it right now. But anyway, and the I'm popcorn. Eat some donuts. The popcorn actually has a meaning because you guys know what time it is. Jacobs top five. And today I'm going to be doing top five horror movie moments involving popcorn. Who does that, right? <laughs> I think I'm the first person in the world who's doing a top five favorite popcorn moments in horror movies. Yeah. But uh, number five goes to the movie called Blob. The main character falls down and lands near a woman who's been attacked by this blob creature. And she is in a pool of popcorn. <laughs> pretty pretty funny scene. Like, they're in a movie theater and there's popcorn, people eating popcorn. When the blob attacks and the main character is running through the um, the movie theater, she trips, falls, and lands near this woman. And all you see is popcorn surrounding it. And it just was so nasty because the popcorn <laughs> was stuck to her face. So. Yeah. But number four has to go to the Gremlins, the original very first Gremlin movie. They are watching the Snow White movie in theaters. Uh oh. There we go. 20%. It was good. Ready to die. Is it 20%? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. It's the first time it popped up. But yeah, in the original movie Gremlins, they're in the theater, the Gremlins are, and they're watching, uh, I believe... Snow White. It was Snow White. And they're like singing, dancing, throwing popcorn everywhere, and this one, it pans over to this one Gremlin, has two bags of popcorn on his ears. It was just a funny moment. Um, number three goes out to Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Now, I know you guys know what I'm talking about when I say the popcorn scene. That's pretty obvious there. Uh, the clown throws the popcorn on the girl. It lands on her dress. She goes to take a shower. And the popcorn actually turns into these alien clown creatures. So it's a very iconic moment. So also, that's obvious. Not just that, but there's also an actual clown that's just a like one of those old-fashioned popcorn things with the snake-looking neck with a uh, clown's head at the top of it mm -hmm. as well in it. You own it but never seen it. That is such a good movie. I've made three people watch that movie just because I enjoyed it so much. Um, and he made me watch it and I thought it was going to be stupid, honestly. Which one, Killer Clowns? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hate that movie. Clowns freak me out. <laughs> I love clowns. And speaking of clowns, number two is Stephen King's It, the new one. Where he's down that drain, he's looking at Georgie, and he's like, Do you smell the circus, Georgie? Hot dogs. And? And Georgie's like, Popcorn? <laughs> popcorn, yes! <laughs> and you, you know why you like popcorn? And <laughs> because they pop. <laughs> so that's, you know, a no-brainer. So that, even though it doesn't show popcorn... That is a very symbolic thing. And I like how they're laughing like... <laughs> and then all of a sudden he like growls at him like... <sighs> I mean it was just a freaky moment in that movie. And obviously number one which I'm going to say because it is my favorite movie of all times. Fuck you. Screw you. This is my number one. <laughs> Fine. Scream. Yeah. The first Scream movie. Because the whole beginning of the film when... Demi, Lov Demi Lovato. <laughs> what Scream movie are you watching? When Demi Moore... Is that her name? No. Is that her name? Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Why did I say Demi Moore? Drew I'm Barrymore. I'm taking this back. Yeah, when, Drew Barrymore. Uh, the iconic Sorry, scene, her name. everyone knows the beginning of Scream. Drew Barrymore gets a random phone call from a guy, and she's making popcorn... Old school popcorn, which I don't think they even make anymore. They do. It's do at they? Walmart. I almost bought it, but I didn't well, want to. Well, you need to buy that kind. But it's old school, comes with a handle, you put it right on the stove, it uh, looks like aluminum tin foil, yeah. tin foil, and it grows. And that's a scary when, movie made fun. Yeah, and when Ghostface calls him and... So what's your favorite scary yeah. movie? And then, of course, you know, this whole time this popcorn's just popping in the back, and then it explodes on her before, you know, she gets killed. Mm -hmm. Very iconic moment. But yes, that is my top five popcorn moments in horror videos. And honestly, Scream is my favorite series. I've watched all four of the movies countless of times. But Scream 1 is the best of all four. 
Yes. All right. So now we're going to move on to my final topic, and then we're going to do the superhero villain of the day, and we will be done for this episode of ADP. But that is not all you all will be seeing of our faces, because right after we get done doing this episode of ADP, we'll be going back over to my channel um, to do my very first ever video game vlog. We are going live again right after this on yes. Batman Dragon's channel. So if you're not subscribed to Batman Dragon, subscribe to Batman Dragon and get ready for his very first video game blog. Alright, so the final topic of ADP is the Animanga Spotlight, which Animanga is anime and manga spotlighting of whatever we decide. And we did, I think last week or the week before, we did, um, I think it was the week before, I did the My Hero Academia and then we did the top five on anime characters. So, this Animanga Spotlight is on Black Clover, the anime, which comes out on October 3rd, which is this coming Tuesday. Okay, so Black Clover is an upcoming anime based off of a manga of the same name. The manga was written by Yuki Tabata and was released back in 2015 for Shonen Jump. It is still ongoing, but on October 3rd, we are going to get our first anime adaption of this manga. It has been released by Funimation and will consist of 13 episodes for the first season. The anime, has been the anime is being written by Kazuyuki Fudiyasu and directed by Tatsuya Yoshihara. And the producers of the show is the same producers that made Bleach, Naruto, and Baruto. So you know it's going to be good. Yeah, so if you don't but know... But Jeremy, what is this show about? Okay, so Black Clover is a story about a young, bo uh, young orphans, <laughs> young Asta and Yuna, who are raised from birth oh, in a show. church in the Clover Kingdom. Um, in this world, everyone in this world has magical powers, and Asta is born without any, whereas his brother Yuno is a prodigy of magic, who has an immense magical power inside of him that no other has. So it's kind of similar to My Hero Academia with a kid being born with no super... Yes, yeah, sort of. ...click or whatever. So the rest of the basic story follows the two foster brothers as they compete against each other to see who will become the Wizard King, which is basically Clover Kingdom's strongest magic knight. Hmm. Asta, though, with no powers, it seems impossible for him to become the most powerful magical knight since he doesn't have any, yeah. but there's a catch. He ends up getting this magical power known as the Anti-Magic. That can destroy all magic. So his like power at once, or can he like look at someone and just like stop? Basically, their power. destroy their magic when they're using magic on him. He can destroy it. So he's an eraser, basically. Basically, like they shoot out an electric bolt at him. He's like, Nah, man, it's not hitting me today. Sort of, yeah. So he has this anti-magic power, whereas his brother has the mag the, the most, most immense power of magical knights possible, and the two of them are competing to become the most powerful wizard king. So when they're fighting, the, uh, the judges will be like, man, he's an expert at defense. I can't wait to see what he does with attack. Okay. He's like, oh, wait. <laughs> so, But there's something about this that is actually unique, is there's this huge controversy over Black Clover because it seems to be a ripoff of Naruto, a young boy who wants to become this powerful being like the Hokage, not as strong as everybody, gets this power from this mysterious thing. Kind of see it? Fox. <laughs> he, gets the, he gets a demon fox, which makes him more powerful, yeah. whereas okay. he gets this anti-magic. Okay. And there's I a lot of similarities within the mangas. And so a and lot of the people... the most powerful brother, a.k.a. Sasuke. Sasuke. So, but yeah, there's a lot okay. of people shitting on Black Clover and are just like so against it. But there are so many people who are for it. And so I'm excited to see how this anime well, yeah, works. yeah, I mean, if you really honestly think about it, how many years since anime existed... And I'm sure at least some point the stories are going to be the same. It's the same for horror stories. Like when you're watching a horror movie and you come across the thing and you're like, huh, I've, I've seen this or heard of this story before, but it's kind of different. I mean, think. Horror movies were made since the 1930s or 1920s even. Maybe even the 1800s. But uh, eventually they're going to sound the same and be the same. Yeah. And to, 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 to answer your question, Amy, Baruto is the sequel to Naruto where it's the son of Naruto and it's 
an anime and a manga. The manga is way better than the anime so far. The anime takes place before the manga, so it's like all this pre Naruto, like pre ninja stuff. Whereas the manga is straightforward. He's a Ginnin. They're doing these missions, and the manga's better, but the anime is still pretty good, and the voice acting is really good too. I'm hoping eventually the manga and anime will be on the same. And page. I'm happy that Naruto got married to Hinata. Yeah, and had Naruto. So that's really great. But yes, if you love anime and you love manga, please check out Black Clover on Tuesday, October 3rd. I know I will. I, I mean, it's going to be an English dub pretty soon, right after the first episode of the Japanese dub. So, Sorry. or Japanese sub. So I'm definitely going to watch this anime because My Hero Academia <laughs> just ended for season two. So I'm kind of like, Adam, I'm missing an anime. So no, and, the, and, the, and the, if you haven't seen the trailer, it's so good. And I'm excited to watch it, and I believe it's going to be one of the best. So I'd say this anime deserves a high five. High five. <laughs> All right. So we're down to the final thing that we do on every episode of ADP, yep. and that superhero is the superhero villain of the day. Villain of the day, and we chose to talk a little bit about the Flash. Reason for is because the Flash TV show comes back on soon, yep. and. To be honest, Flash is probably the greatest TV show of the superhero TV shows that's currently airing. I do agree with that. Out of all the superhero shows that they have, I personally think The Flash is probably the number one best superhero yeah. show, Gotham, in my opinion. Because, see, Gotham is good. I do love what they do with Gotham. I do love the stories they do and the characters. It's just... It's kind of cringeworthy being a Batman times, fan. Being a Batman fan, you and want... like wait a minute, Scarecrow doesn't exist when Bruce Wayne is 11 or 12 or whatever age he's at at this point. And, uh, and same with Arrow. Arrow, you're like, Arrow is like too serious, too dark. Also, kinda. it's it's just, it's a really depressing show. Yeah, where, but The Flash, I mean, it, it just has so much going for it. I love The Flash. Yes, so and for me, it's because, to me, Gotham is not a superhero TV show. To me, Gotham is a crime show with superhero oh, characters. characters. I mean, I do love Gotham. It's it's my favorite, one of my favorite TV shows on. I do love every character they've got playing, every actor who's playing each character from the series I love. It's just, there is times, and I will say, when I'm watching it, I'm just like, no, don't do that. That's not good. And then they do it, and then I'm like, <laughs> but I still watch it because it's fun to watch, and I do enjoy... I just wish they would have done a little bit different with how they produce characters into the show and stuff like that. But for me, The Flash is better because it is a superhero show. And it's it's got everything you need. Of course, that might not stand past the season because I feel like they have outdone everything they possibly could do with yeah, the speedster villains. Yeah, they've hit the Flashpoint. I mean, they were cycling through all of Flash's major stories. But anyway, we're going to take a step from just the Flash show... And move a little forward to the comic books. Yes. The Flash, his character in general, has went through a major change in the comic books, actually. See, it actually introduced a negative speed force. Now, yeah. if you know if you know anything about the Flash, you know that he gets his powers from the speed force. And he's actually had several times where he has went in the speed force and so on and so forth. But they introduced a negative speed force, and Zoom had tra not Zoom, but Reverse Flash, either Reverse Flash or Zoom, I'm pretty sure it was Zoom though, trapped Barry Allen in the negative speed force, and Barry Allen, it altered him, gave him new abilities, everything, and he even dubbed a new suit. It's still red, but it's like black lightning stuff, and they call him the negative Flash. So... With all new, brand new villains and everything. I mean, Flash Comics is where it's at. If you're wanting to start reading comic books, I would go out and start with The Flash. Because those yeah. comics are very good. So that's why we chose the Flash character. And Flash is not just, you know, the fastest man alive. He's, I don't know, he's got the personality of, you know, lost his parents. What was disgusting? Just random. That was disgusting. <laughs> the comic books. That was disgusting. Oh, look, the phone's ringing. Special guest. 
Hello. I'm um, sitting up here doing ADP. Me and Jacob's YouTube channel. My dad called. She's in uh, her room. Hmm. Well, here, Jacob's gonna run it to her. Be white black, guys. But as I was saying, um, the Flash is really, really one of the most unique characters on the Justice League because of his personality, his comedy, and I really just want to see a new... <laughs> Tell him I said hi. <laughs> the Joker. That's funny. Oh. But Did they ever say what was disgusting? Uh, Jerome in season three. Oh, okay. Okay, Jerome. Oh, so, when he ripped his face off? That was actually in the comic books, by the way. Joker, at the very oh, first yeah. uh, Detective Comics of the New 52, Joker gets his face cut off, makes it into a mask, and he wears his own face as a mask. And he looks at Batman, and he goes, Look, now I have a mask, too. I'm still hoping Jerome's not the Joker. I still am. Yeah, Same. I mean, that would be a little bit disappointing. Mm, not really. I mean, he played a great Joker, don't get me wrong, but... Just knowing a name and a story. Yeah, I'd rather be something different, yeah. honestly, because that's just how I am. But anyway, are we ending this segment now? Yes, that is the end of ADP. Again, just to remind you all for next week, ADP will not be on my channel. Or it my It won't be channel. on his channel. It will be on another channel we are creating, which is the ADP Show channel. We will be putting the link in this episode once I create the channel and Jacob on every one of his videos are going to remind you all yeah, about this. I'm network. actually going to put a um, link like you know how at the end of my videos I'll have like a subscribe button here of me well, right over here on this video I'm going to put a link to our new sh uh, new channel so if you like ADP and you want to continue watching ADP with us which we hope to God you do. If you don't, I can completely understand. But ADP is just something that I personally love to do. And if you guys don't enjoy it, that's perfectly fine. I still have fun doing it. So, you know, there's no no real loss, I feel. I'm not getting paid for any of this anyway. So, there's yeah. no real loss on my part. But we hope you all subscribe to the channel and keep up to date with ADP. But I will put a thing right over here. So... If you're watching this in the future, right over there, right above his head, click it now. Subscribe. All right. Thank you all for watching ADP this week. The newest episode on my channel is going to happen directly after this goes off. Oh, we forgot the most important part. What? Questions. Oh, crap. We almost ended the show without questions. Oh, do you guys have any questions whatsoever for us? Uh, please let us know right now. If you're on live watching, please let us know of any questions that you may or may not have. And um, we're waiting. <laughs> and still waiting. No, I'm just kidding. I know you can type faster than that. Oh, what was that question that you said that uh, oh, Isaac, Isaac had gave us? Isaac gave me a very good us. question. What was it? Um, oh, if we can revise a certain genre of a horror movie and replace it with all the paranormal slash found footage tapes, what would we bring back? You know how, like, it used to be very popular of the paranormal stuff and it kind of died out for a long time, and then now here recently everything's been paranormal and, you know, found footage uh, horror movies and stuff like that? If uh, we could revise any certain genre of horror to kind of bring back, make popular again, what would it be? So, like, are you trying to say, like, if I could redo a, a certain movie style of horror with movies. cameras or revise a horror style? No, of um, you know, like, for example, slasher films. Would you want to bring back slasher films as a major film franchise for the next few years? Or is there a different style of horror movie that you want to see? So, for me, I think you need to, to hit the close thing. Oh, that. dang. Um, I think for me, uh, a genre of horror that I think they should bring back is definitely the slasher movies because I think slasher movies with... And not just like... Don't give us another Michael Myers 
remake or a Friday, Freddy Krueger or a Leatherface or one of those, I want them to revamp with new people that we can sit there and be like, so, oh my god. So, you want brand new franchises, but similar style as, yeah, like, like, Friday like, I, the I want to, like, be able to sit here and be like, oh my god, did you see Pumpkin Slicer or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> Anal Puncher 3. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean? Like, we have Freddy Krueger, we have Chucky, um, we have all these cool villains that we can watch, and we need new ones yeah. to look at and be like, oh my god, that's, that's just as cool as Michael Myers. That's just as cool as, you know, Chucky or Hellraiser or whatever, because we haven't got something like that in mm -hmm. forever. I think they should bring back uh, Haunted Car... Well, not really Haunted Cars, because that's still paranormal. Shoot. Uh, but what about what about car videos in particular? Like, like car what, movies? I think they should make some horror movies with cars. I feel like cars haven't been too much into horror movies. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? With Stephen King's trucks, something kind of similar. But, like. I just I feel know. like that kind of genre would just get old because you could. Like, imagine having, like, nine oh, movies like that all at once. You know what I mean? <laughs> I agree with him. And we got. A, maybe werewolves. Maybe we haven't seen two. horror werewolf movies in a long time. That's true. We haven't seen a good werewolf movie in a long time. Um, what's your two favorite Gotham characters for both of us? My absolute favorite Gotham show character. Probably has to go to Jerome because that kid plays a very good Jokerish character. Like I really enjoy his character. I like the way he speaks to people. I like his like little laugh uh, quirks to him. I I just love his character. Uh, and what's one of yours? Two favorites, Jerome as well. Jerome is definitely. Um, but it, what if you had to pick some other than? Oh, if I had to pick two other ones, yeah. um, it would definitely be Penguin, because the Penguin on there is by far the best Penguin we've gotten in a live cinematic style. You know, it's a TV show. It's still better than what we've gotten previously, because Danny DeVito is not anywhere close to being a good Penguin. I mean, he's got the he size He could down. have been, but I think <laughs> that uh, Tim Burton yeah. kind of... And my second favorite much. character is... It's got, it has to be... Selena Kyle. I love her, Selena Kyle. And if she gets older, she damn well better play Catwoman mm. in the movie because she will do the perfect And part. Uh, my second favorite character, um, I don't really care for the guy in real life, but uh, the guy who plays the Riddler. I think the Riddler mm. is one of the greatest characters on the show. Riddler has always been one of my favorite Batman villains of all times. So, seeing him come to full Riddler-ish style on the show, I just loved it. So. Yeah, Penguin and Riddler are probably two of the best characters they can reuse consistently in the show without getting old. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got a question. But, but um, when you were asking that question earlier, you know what I actually thought you were asking, which is actually a good question. If you could take a any horror movie that you ever watched and do it in a Paranormal Activity camera style movie, what would it be? It's like, imagine, like, the whole movie is in, like, a person recording. Uh, first person, like, yeah, recording movie. Thing. Yeah, but of any movie you've ever watched before. So, like, imagine Saw, if it was done in that style. Or Scream, or Freddy Krueger, or Friday the 13th, or Chucky, or any of those movies. Imagine Chucky in a camera movie. Like, they're, Dude, like, child's the boy play, recording, but a found footage style film. Like, whoa. Think about it. Like, that it would, would make scary. that whole much more scarier because you'd just be sitting there and all of a sudden, like, you'd see the doll move and stuff yeah, like, like that. I think I saw the doll move. Let me, I'm just going to set the camera right I here. I mean, you couldn't do the whole night. movie the same way, but you could retell the movie. Can you imagine the it? doll getting up, walking, getting a knife in the kitchen, climbing on the bed, and just kind of stabbing the person. Well, see, you wouldn't get the... Because think about it. Like, you would have the mom recording her son opening the toy, and then, like, you know, she'd be recording him going to sleep or whatever, because she's like, you know, because most of the times you're like, why are they recording at this point? And then, you know, she sees something happen. Her friend gets killed. Or, the or like you said, Chucky picks up the camera and records mm -hmm. what he's doing. I think that would be honestly really cool. And Saw. Like, I mean, it would be harder to do Saw with a camera, but just... If you could think about it, they would have to redo the movie with the cameras in mind. Yeah. A lot of the movies would. But I think the cooler ones would be the slasher movies. Like, imagine Freddy Krueger and Jason and That'd stuff like that. That'd be hard to do in a first film. 
style of Freddy Krueger. It'd just be well, not Freddy Krueger. Sorry, I meant Michael Myers and stuff like that. Um, but like, anyway, imagine her just recording, <clears throat> and she sees someone walk into the neighbor's we, house and kills. We do have one last question from Isaac, and it was, "What was my least favorite Stephen King book?" And honest to God, I can't answer that because Stephen King is one of my top favorite writers of all times, and. I think that none of his books are bad. I don't think that none of his books are bad, but um, if I had to pick my least favorite, it would have to be um, Firestarter. I just think Firestarter was kind of... Actually, actually, the book was very good. I know, but for me, it's just like, out of all the stuff the I've watched of Stephen King's, that's kind of my least favorite amongst um, them. That or um, The Green Mile. Like, I didn't I really think... care for Green Mile. As much as some people I think, did. in all honesty, the Gunslinger was my least favorite, and that's only because I don't know the whole story yet. I've only read just that one of the Dark Tower series, and I know the Dark Tower is supposed to be one of you the finished best. the whole first book. Yeah, I finished the whole first one, but it wasn't. I guess me watching the movie and then reading the book, I was kind of disappointed in the book. But like I said, I need to go and read every last one of them. That way I can get the whole picture and actually love it all. So, I guess as of right now, the very first book was kind of disappointing to me. And real quickly, this is just me trying to help out two writers. Because I think they need to like be you know checked out. Um, the book The House, I think it's by Peter Straub, right? Is that his name? Yes, Peter Straub. No, Peter, I it's actually think of his name. written by Ted Decker. Ted and, Decker. Uh, that's who I was thinking oh, of. Oh, God. What was the other guy's name? You, if you can, go grab it real quick. I see it right there. Um, but I honestly think The House by Ted Decker is one of the best stories I've ever read. Peret, uh, Frank well, I, Grab Peretti. it for a second. I want to see it. Frank Peretti. Yeah. I just wanted to see it real quick. Show him. So this is what it looks like. Um... It's called The House by now Ted Decker and Frank Freddy. Based on the book too. Yes. The movie, I have not... I have watched the movie. I have not finished reading the book fully. But this book is so good. Like, I read half the book before I watched the movie. And if this is any better than the, than the, if the movie... If this is better than the movie, then dang. Like, this is such a good book to read. And Jacob, he is recommending a book called We'll Never Be Apart. I remember you telling me about this book. I have a YouTube video of a review on that book. So, uh, you might have to look up earlier videos of my channel, but... Yeah, uh, I do have a review on this book already. But I would recommend you guys to read this. It's called We'll Never Be Apart. Um, my only problem with it is the ending is kind of predictable. But other than that, very good. Very yeah. good story. And to help out a local writer, um, there is a um, one of my friends that I met in college. Her name is Andrea Rollins. I recommend you guys go and pick up her book, Asylum. I did a review on, on my channel, and I did have some critiques about it. But at the same time, if you are into like the saw, like scary, bloody, gory, really messed up stuff, her book is really messed up. Like some of the Think things. Think of there. Saw and Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, I mean, there's some scenes in there that literally made me cringe reading. So those are three books I recommend reading. Um, I kind of just wanted to do that as a, like, to help other writers, especially, like, really good book writers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Because I am one myself, so. And you are, too. Yeah, I'm working on a book, actually, too. Mine's finished. I just have to edit and publish, so. But thank you guys so much for joining in. I have to cancel it because it's, uh, my phone's getting ready to die. Thank you so much for participating. I love you guys. Love, love you, you, Jeremy. All. Love you too. Love you, Clayface. Love you, love Stephen this King. popcorn. Love you, Stephen King. Especially Stephen King. But I'm Batman Dragon. And I am C3. Gao. Twinity. And we are out. Dooskies, guys. See y'all next Saturday. <laughs>